Today's video, I'm going to tell you how to save money and reduce your CO2 emissions. Because today's video is all about saving money on your gas heating bill and how simple tips I'm going to offer you today will help reduce all them. Now, first thing you can do to save yourself some money is change the temperatures settings that your boiler will work at. Now, if you have a cylinder system, so you have a big hot water tank that stores the water, the temperatures that you require will be slightly different for the hot water to be stored at. And I will put full links and descriptions of information down below in the description because it is very different. It's important that you set them at a high temperature to prevent Legionnaire's disease. Now in the combi system, there is no hot water stored in my system. So I've set the hot water here on the left. So you'll have two dials like this usually on your boiler. And I've set the, the, the degrees here at 45 C. Now Octopus do recommend that you set it at 50, but I've set it at 45 because we don't really use any hot water apart from washing our hands on the taps. We have an electric shower apart from the family bathroom, which has it fed off the boiler, which we only use for washing the dog, in which case we don't have it that warm for her anyway. We don't want to scold the dog. So 45C is absolutely perfect there. On the right hand side, we have the flow temperature for the radiators. Now, mine has what we call a combi uh, stat system. It has a separate outside thermostat system, which tries to compensate to always hit that temperature depending on what the outside temperature is. If you've got a system like me, it's a little bit harder to set what your temperature flow rate is, but you can have a plate and we'll explain how you can measure that in a minute. If you don't have a, a, a system like that, you'll turn this and it will change the degrees that which the flow will flow out of your boiler. Now, modern boilers condensate, but they only condensate at degrees below 55 C return. So if you're flowing your boiler's temperature out from your boiler at what the engineer likely set it up at, which would be 80 C, you'll be returning a temperature back to the boiler of way above 55C, which means that your boiler won't condensate, which means that your boiler is nowhere running near the efficiency at which you bought your boiler at. So what I've done with mine is I've currently got a flow rate of temperature of around about 30C. Now it bounces up and down depending on what the outside temperature is, but it's usually about 30C, which means the return temperature to my boiler is always a little bit lower. Now I usually see 26, uh, 26 and a half C return rate to that boiler. Now, if you turn it here, it actually says I've set the temperature for my inside of my house at 15 C. Now, if you're a modern house, I recommend that you go straight to a low setting of around about a 30 C return rate. If you're in an older house, then set it at around about 55, 50, because you will be returning less than 55. And that means that you will condensate. Now, the lower temperature you return back to the boiler to condensate, the more efficient the condensating part of the boiler works. So try and get it as low as you can. If you're a old house, just adjust it down a couple of temperature each day. And if you're a new build house and it's not hitting temperature, try adjusting it up a couple of degrees each day. And if you are in a new house and it hits it straight away and it's perfect, try adjusting it down a little bit more, save a little bit more. Now to check it, I've bought a thermal infrared gun, so I can just point this at anything in the room and it will tell me what temperature it is. To get the temperature of the flow and the return, and without using this because it's never perfect, I've wrapped some black tape around the flow and return pipes underneath the boiler, and then I just give it a give it a while while the system's been running and point this at the black tape so it doesn't reflect back and we get a perfect reading on what the temperature is of that flow and return. As you can see, it flows out at 30 and returns back at about 26.5 degrees, which is a perfect temperature for condensing, condensating that temperature back and saving me money. If you're looking for getting an infrared gun or any of the black tape or any of the other features that I'm talking about in today's video, then check out the description. There's a link to Amazon to all the products that I am showing here today. Now, my next tip is to do with the Tadu radio thermostats. Now, I won't go into too much detail on these because there is a video, a product review of them top right. But what I have done is I've added three more of these Tadu TRV valves to my system. I've added one to my main bedroom. I've added one to my office and one to my spare bedroom my wife uses as a dressing room to get ready in the morning so she doesn't wake me up when she goes to work. And the reason for that is the office is only used by me between Wednesday, Fridays and Saturdays. That's it, the only days. So there's no, the heating I can turn off fully in those days, completely controlled, completely individually turn them off. 
My wife only gets dressed in the spare room in the morning, so therefore it doesn't need to be heated in the afternoon. So it's turned off in the afternoon. And our bedroom is, we're in there in the morning, but then we don't go to bed into that room until at least half nine, 10 o'clock. So the heating doesn't turn on in there till about sort of half eight, nine o'clock to start getting it warm, ready for bed. And again, it's a much lower required temperature than say, I would want to be in the lounge where I'm nice and comfortable. Now, Tadu is a fair bit of money up front to invest for a sort of long-term payback. But if you're like me and you have a schedule where you're not going to have a room on at all, they are a great way of cutting down wasted energy to rooms that you don't need to heat. Even if you don't want to invest in the Tadu system, I recommend that you at least go for their basic, really simple, you know, analog system version, which are radio, uh, just a normal TRV valve. So these go on your radiator and you turn them to a number and then once they've hit that number because they have a little mercury bit inside they'll put a pit, they'll drop the pin back into the radiator and seal the radiator from uh, emitting any more heat so if you haven't already got some of these valves that work by temperature sensor which are as cheap as chips they're about six or seven quid for each you get a pack of three for about 20 quid, then I fully, fully recommend you invest in some of these at the bare minimum. Now this is a change that won't really affect your comfort levels or how you feel, and that is change the way your thermostat turns off and possibly on. Now, if you are like me and you have a thermostat that runs on a timer and you go to bed at 10 and you've got it setting to turn off at 10, that's the wrong way of using it. Try turning your thermostat 15 minutes early before you go to bed, so 9.45. That 15 minutes per day over a week is one hour and 45 minutes of saving. Imagine how much that saving adds up over maybe a four or five month winter period, or even this 12 week octopus special. Now, if you're in a modern house, try it half an hour before you go to bed that the thermostat turns off, because if you're in a modern house, that half an hour turning off early of the thermostat your house isn't going to cold, you know, get cold in that half an hour. It's going to gradually cool down, but not by enough that you'll notice it by the time you go to bed. Now, you won't be surprised that most your heat goes out of your windows. Your windows release the most heat because they are the least insulated part of your house. And during the day, they do the wonderful job of letting light in. But at night, they're just a big heat escape. They're letting all the heat out of the glass panes. And what can you do to fix this? Well, most of us, if not all of us, have curtains or blinds that can be shut. So at night, when it's dark, shut the blinds. And this blind, this curtain, when it is shut fully, it will act as an extra barrier of insulation between the window pane and your heated room, meaning that you'll actually use less gas. A major difference can be made by changing your thermostat down a degree. Now this wouldn't be for everyone, some people really like their temperature at the moment, but try a degree less. So if you set it for 20 at the moment, try 19. If you set for 21, try 20. Now you might not make that jump straight away by one degree, that's quite a noticeable jump for quite a lot of people, but try going down half a degree. So try 19 and a half degrees and then the next week or two weeks after try another half a degree off that and you'll probably notice that you'll adjust very easy to that half a degree in two steps and you might find that that's a comfortable room temperature from you from then on and that will be a huge saving to your bill these changes won't cost you any money and will make no difference to the temperature that you feel physically in the room but will make a massive saving in the time that your boiler stays on for and they are, don't dry any clothes on your radiators. Those clothes will absorb the heat. Use airers or heated areas, but don't put clothes on the radiators. That's the worst thing you can do. It will absolutely drain the radiator's heat, meaning they're less effective. Close the doors in the rooms, because that's the way the radiators work. They convert the heat around the room. A closed room means that they're only heating the room they're designed for. And most importantly, furniture. Move it away from radiators. If it's next to the radiators, the furniture will absorb the heat into the back of it, meaning they're not heating the room effectively. So try and keep a small air gap between the sofa and the radiator behind it. And once you've moved that radiator, make sure you give the radiators a good dusting. Dust does the same as clothes or furniture against it. They absorb the heat 
out of your radiator, wasting it and heating dust. And if you've got fans behind your radiators like I have, if you can, try and clean up and down those fans because again, that dust is absorbing the heat instead of releasing it to the room. Instead of heating the whole room, why don't you just heat your body by using a blanket or a fro just to keep yourself warm. You can also drink hot tea and hot coffee to help regulate your body temperature better. Now the biggest thing that will lose heat in your home are drafts. So check around your window cells, windows, skirting boards for any sort of drafty air that you can feel coming in. Draft means cold air entering and hot air leaving your house. Now you can buy something as simple as decorator cork and all you do is run it around your skirting board. It can be painted over, same around your window sills everything like that, go around that, seal up those drafts, that will make a massive difference to the amount of heat that's leaving your home. Now talking about drafts, this front door here is a new build house. You'd assume that there'd be no drafts, it's a sealed door and I actually thought it was, you know, pretty good at keeping the heat in and the cold out. But I could physically feel it was always colder near the bottom of this door, even though I couldn't feel any physical drafts, I could physically tell it was colder. So as an experiment, I bought a draft excluder. This room, when I was running it at 30C flow rate, that the temperature in this room just wouldn't hit its target 20C in this room. Bought this draft excluder from Amazon, uh, link below, like I said, with, for all the products I'm talking about today in the description. Bought this cheap draft excluder, and you can make your own if you want, but I'm lazy. Uh, put this draft excluder in front of the door, and I measured the temperature with my infrared gun, and then left it a couple, you know, for a couple of hours to keep the room warm and removed the draft excluder and re-measured with the infrared gun. And there was a 1.51 Celsius change in front of the door. And that's just after 10 minutes. So imagine how that is after a long day. So even if you don't think you have a drafty front door, try a draft excluder, try making your own draft excluder. They are peanuts to buy. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to me, go and click subscribe. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.